It's the 11th of April, and I've already heard of 10 people that I know, not someone, a friend of a friend, but 10 people that I know that have been laid off, lost their jobs. I have, uh, this thing is accelerating. This thing is accelerating. This is taking on a new complexion. The economy at large is very, very curious because it's segmented. There are certain people doing amazingly well. There are other people who are sucking ass. I do believe the number of people who are sucking ass will grow exponentially in the next five years. And this is why you need to quit your job in 2014. You need to really, really be working on an escape plan an exit strategy because what happened to me 15, 16 years ago is going to happen to many of you. Is it going to happen to everyone? Nope, it's not. But do you know, are you going to be the sacrificial lamb? Or are you going to be sitting at the table eating the ham? The question is, which one are you going to be? I'm going to give you a little guidance on this. I'm going to give you a lot of guidance, really. Number one, you're not needed. That's why you should quit your job in 2014. You are not needed. A corporation's major aim is to do more with less, therefore becoming more efficient. That is goal number one. I don't care about mission statements. I don't care about digging wells in Africa for little starving children. That's window dressing. That is to keep you calm and not cut your boss's throat. The reality is you're not needed. Your skill sets are not needed. And as soon as they can get rid of you, they will. This is, this is, I became this different kind of person after getting laid off three times in 18 months. It, it really fucked with me because much of your self worth is, okay, much of your self worth is tied up in what you do. A friend of mine posted on Facebook. Tell us who you are, but don't mention your educational credentials, your job, blah, blah. Just the surface stuff. Who are you at the core of your person? Who are you? And many people struggle with that exercise because so many people are wrapped up in what they do. That's how big your job, your career is of your identity. Your job, your career may be your total identity. And if you do not, and that's not bad. If you control your career, your job, you may own the business, and that's your identity, that's not so bad because one person can't take you out. And that is uh, number. That's one of the reasons that you should quit your job. Because if you have a job and one person can decide whether you're getting a check next week or not, you are in trouble. You need to diversify. I, I own my own company. I have hundreds and hundreds of customers and not one of them can make me or break me. When I was doing eBay, we were eBay top heavy. We are 75% of our lose were coming from eBay at one point. That's, that shit kept me up awake at night. And fortunately, before we got the big kahaka, I started making plans and when it happened, we were able to move our business and products in other areas and it hurt, but we didn't go out of business. When there is, and this is something I learned from reading a management book when I was in high school, don't ever have one customer be 51% of your business because they are your business. They are your pimp and you are their whore. You say you don't suck dick, I beg to differ. If you have one major customer, you're sucking dick and you're looking pussy like you've never done before on a ethereal level even. You're doing that shit in your sleep because What's the old adage? Want luxuries once tasted become necessities. Once you get used to that customer, hey, the dick sucking and the pussy licking is not so bad. That's a problem. Just a quick thing, even if you have a business, you need to segment. You need to have quarters. Like maybe 30% of your business is coming from this one sector. Or better yet, if you can somehow get the 
quarter. 25% of your business is coming from here. 25% of your business is coming from here. Or you've got 10% of your business coming here. The more diversified you are today, the safer you are. I have taken much criticism for not putting a lot of my books on Amazon. I'm a member of four different writing groups. Right now, some's going on. People's sales are going down. They're freaking out. My sales are going up because I'm out here in the real world with you. I'm not afraid to talk to people. I'm not afraid to say, hey, my name's Glenda Cameron. I have products to sell, and I want you to buy my fucking products. A lot of people won't say that because, oh, you shouldn't say that. Oh, no, no, no. You should be their friend. In the 24 hours I have in one day, it's hard enough to be a friend to the people that I love and consider close to me versus being a friend to the world. It's virtually impossible. It's a lie. We can be friendly, we can be agreeable, and we can get along, but for us being truly friends, that's a pipe dream. And many people go into that. So you've got to diversify. You have got to diversify your streams of income. I have nine different streams of income right now. Some are cheap, some only 50 bucks here, some's like 300 bucks here, but that's today. Guarantee you, those nine streams of income, five years from now, they're all gonna be breaking 100K a year. That's the goal. But I'm patient enough and working diligently on that to realize that because it's not gonna happen overnight. So that's another reason you need to quit your job in 2014 or start working on it. It's not going to happen overnight. You have got to start today, not tomorrow, not when the kids get out of college, not when your wife's no longer mad at you or when your husband's not fucking that other chick. You need to start today. Because if you do one thing per day that moves you ahead in your business at the end of one year from whenever you start, that is 365 actions moving you forward. Over 10 years, that's 3,650 actions moving you forward. If you consistently put action into play, you will be successful. It's, it's, it's time management, it's time management. But that's another reason you need to quit your job in 2014 or start working on it because you don't have that much time. Whatever age you are, you still don't have that much time. If you're 30, you don't have that much time. If you're 20, you don't have that much time. If you're 60, you really don't have that much time. But you still have time that you can use to escape from the matrix. Because another reason that you need to quit your job and start building a business is chunks of money. I've made more money by signing a contract in 68 seconds than most people make all fucking year long. 68 seconds, sign a contract, they said okay, and they slid a check across the table to me. The work was already done, they didn't know that. I had already did the work. I just did some emails, talked to some people. I worked on that project maybe 20 hours. Maybe 20 hours. So you're not gonna get a chunk of money in 95% of the jobs out there. There are some people that will get performance bonuses. Great, if you're one of those lucky people that get a performance bonus, awesome. But most of the performance bonuses fall between five and $10,000. When I signed that contract, it was uh, six figures. That's what it came up to be, 68 seconds for six figures. So essentially, you'll never, ever get a huge chunk of money working 95% of the jobs out there. And let's talk about the chunks of money. You will need the chunk of money to escape the matrix because I'll lay out a very simple plan for you that will rescue most of you. If you could somehow get your hands on $500,000 liquid, that's not before, you know, that's it. Taxes taken out 500 G's in say two years, three years even, and you manage your money wisely. Buy yourself a house in a decent neighborhood, not a mansion. Pay your car off. So you spent maybe 150, 250 on the house. You understand, when you buy a house, you're renting. Yes, because you always, if you don't pay those property taxes, you don't think you're renting, don't pay those property taxes and see what happens to that house you think you own. So you're renting, it's just a much lower rent rate. Buy that house, pay the rent every year, 
make sure your house is insured. Go out and get you whatever car you want. If you want a fucking Porsche, pay cash for it. If you want a Tahoe, pay cash for it. So you spend anywhere from 20 to 60 G's for your car. It's paid for, right? So you're like, you still got 200 some thousand dollars left or 300, depending upon what type of house you bought. You still got money left over. You can invest that in rental property, say three uh, $50,000 rental properties or four if you got two you know invest in rental property pay it off okay so now you've bought that rental property which goes up which is not really some increase in value most don't but essentially your money is in a tangible asset that produces cash so you got those three four five six rental properties they're paying you six hundred to a thousand a month you're out the game you've escaped the matrix you're out the game You've got two to four thousand dollars a month, maybe more, coming in every month, and your burn rate is zero almost. You have utilities, life insurance, you know, property taxes. I mean, your burn rate might be twenty percent of your uh, income that comes in every month, or thirty percent, you know, depending upon you know. Because the thing is. Once you get that house out the way, once you get that carpet, that is, those are the biggest expenditures for 90% of the people in the United States of America. Most people are not buying commercial property. Most people are not buying businesses. So once you do that, you are out of the fucking matrix. And this is why you need to quit your job or start fucking working on it, is you get that chunk of money, it could change your life. It could free you where you can sit down and really think about what the hell you want to do because to me this notion of retirement is a misnomer. I think it is a red herring. What are you going to retire? You're going to work your ass off for 20 for 40 years, 30 something to 40 something, maybe 50 years to sit down and actually do what you want to do with it yourself every day. Well, if you get a business and get yourself a chunk of money, you can hit that point in three to five years where you are well, like, I'm quasi-retired. And when I say quasi-retired is, I don't have to go to a job. I don't have to punch a time clock. I don't have to fuck with people I don't want to fuck with. And my time is mind and control. That's retirement for most people, being able to do what they want and control their time. You can get there much quicker than if you're doing the traditional route of the middle class. And that's another reason that you need to quit your fucking job and start working on it. The middle class has been carved the fuck out. If you're in the middle class, there is a target on your back. You don't you make too much money for government assistance, but you need assistance because if you got a family of four and you're making 100 G's and they're taking 30, 25 to 30, so that leaves 75. Those three kids are costing you two to three G's a month between shelter, food, medical expenses. You do the math. You do the math. You're struggling. You're struggling in certain parts of the country. If you are out in Boaz, Montana, if such a place exists, you might be balling out on that. But most places are not Boaz, Montana. And if you're in Boaz, Montana, you're probably not making six figures because there's not the economic infrastructure out there unless you're a smart cat working on the internet like me. Then it doesn't matter where you live. Bam! Which is another reason that you need to quit your fucking job in 2014 and start working on it is you free yourself of location constraints. I don't care if you run a physical business. If you set it up right, you don't have to be there. I have a friend, actually a client, who has a physical business and uh, we've been working together shit two years now and we've developed a program where this person has a physical and didn't want to do it fought me fought me fought me but said this is what you need to do you need to hire yourself and it's like what you need to hire someone that does everything that you do pay them well and then you can do whatever the fuck you want to do but it's my business it's my bitch wake the fuck up and smell the reality so after six months of consults we finally get it out uh, she goes through this round of hiring people. She finds this guy. He's the guy. He has the skills. He wants the job. She pays him more than she was paying herself. Because, you know, when you run a business, everything gets reinvested because you feel that there's something wrong if you take too much money out of the business. I saw her numbers. There was a lot of money in that business where she could have paid herself more, but she chose not to. So she pays this guy. 
He's making $80,000 a year. He hits metrics. He gets a $25,000 performance bonus. So he's like at 105, right? Dude goes in. He's an eager fucking beaver. Dude is like fucking burning the midnight oil, the early morning oil, the midday. He's burning it. Dude, within a year, increases her revenues 45%. So for those of you who are economically savvy, he paid his salary and performance bonus, made her more money. She's making more money now that she's not part of the business. And uh, she's in Hawaii right now, hanging out. She spends her time traveling the fucking world. She spent a week in Paris, then she spent a week in London, then she spent a week in Germany, then she spent a week, I think, in Austria. She's making more money than she's ever made before because she did the hard work of building the business. And the thing is, you know, she was thinking about selling it, and I was like, hold up, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't sell it. Milk it. You are effectively retired with a large six-figure severance package from your business. Don't sell it. I, I mean, we had a fight about this. Like, don't sell it, don't sell it, don't sell it. Dude is still working, burning the midnight oil because he wants that bonus. See, he's in that worker bee mentality. He's like, ooh, I work hard. I'm, he's trading time for money. Great. Awesome. But, you know, I said, you know, I even told her, I said, one day he may want to become a partner in the business. And she said, I don't know about that. I said, this is how you do it. He actually makes less money when he becomes a partner because he's going to have to pay you equity to get that big chunk. I already wrote up the plan, five-year plan, what he has to do. Uh, he has an ass, but she's ready if he does. He will actually, because the thing is, he's going to make less money for five years, which means she's going to get a big chunk of money because his salary is going to go down to 50 G's because he's an owner, and he's going to earn a lot of money, but that money's going to go to pay for the equity in the business that she's built. It's fair, it's right, and he's a smart cat, and he'll probably do it. See, that is the power of building your own business. You can't do this shit with a job, which is another reason that you should quit your fucking job in 2014. Power. As an employee, they will tell you in the mission statement that we value you, blah, 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 blah. Look at how you are treated. Look at your paycheck. Do those two things reflect that you're well-liked and loved by this corporation. There are some corporations, they mean what they say in the mission statement, they make it happen, they do it, and that to me is the minority, that is not the majority. Hence, the reason unions exist. So, you should. You don't have any power. Can you decide what project you're going to work on? Can you just say, hey, I'm not going in the office today. Can you do that? Can you say, you know what, uh, I actually feel like taking three months off and I'm going to go travel the world. There's some companies that actually do that. Most do not. Most cannot afford to do that. So getting power and control of your life is another reason you should quit your job and start a business in 2014. Because you have no power as an employee. You work with people you fucking hate. You do work you can't stand. You work in an environment you don't like. How is that power? I remember when I was selling office furniture, this one guy gave his employees the option to pick the colors of the chairs and the cubicles they were going to be in. You thought this was a great thing. You know what happened? A fight happened. People wanted this color. People wanted that color. In the end, he ended up making the decision and wish he had never put it on the floor. Because when you are unaccustomed to having power, you typically abuse it or run from it or get rid of it because it feels so foreign. You have no power. If someone gives you a bunch of power, I saw it in the military. Uh, I don't want to be a sergeant. I don't want to be this. Actually, I was one of those people because I didn't want the responsibility because I didn't understand how power works. I was so comfortable not being in charge that I realized that I gave up way more than I got in that proposition. That's another reason you need to start your own business and fucking quit your job in 2014. You're going to learn how to measure your abilities. You're going to learn where you stand in the world. You're going to learn if you're good as you think you are because everyone who has a job, first, most everyone, not everyone, most people think they're underpaid. 
Most people think they're CEO material. Most people think they're manager material. Okay, prove it. Start your own shit and let's let's see if that shit sinks or swims. That that action is the greatest truth there is. Nothing, nothing trumps action. Nothing. Nothing. So if you're sitting there thinking, oh, you know, I can do my job better than my manager, okay, do it. I was that person. I was like, I can do this better than these people. And you know what? I started a business and you know what? I could. I could. And you can too. Many of you can. Many of you can do it if you would get over your fear, which is another reason that you need to quit your job in 2014 or start working on it, is to deal with your fear. When you start to deal with your fear, when you start to take initiative, you will grow as a person in ways that you cannot even imagine. Your life will change in so many ways. You will be proud of yourself. You will feel this level of contentment and satisfaction that I can't even explain to you. Because going back to one of those little time, how much time do you have? I don't know how much time I have, but you don't know how much time. I'm planning on making the best of it. Uh, there's another this thing that you're going to get your reward when you die. I am not with that plan. I'm getting my fucking reward while I'm here, which means I had to grow as a person, which means I will have to continue to grow as a person and change and make myself better and learn from my mistakes and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. Which is another reason you need to quit your job in 2014 or at least start working on it, is learning how to deal with adversity. Everyone that starts a business goes through some bullshit on some level. It could be with your customers, it could be with code enforcement, it could be with the city, it could be, it can be with your landlord, it could be with your uh, hosting provider. Everyone that starts a business deals with bullshit. Now, the more bullshit that you can deal with and manage well, the more money you will make. Why? Because if you're dealing with a lot of bullshit and you're managing it well and you're dealing with it well, that means it separates you. That puts you in the fucking top 5% of the people in the world. Because most people run from these things. If you start to do stuff that other people are running from, your income is going to explode. Your income is... I, this is, goes back to what I said about chunks of money. I want you to think about it. Let's let's dial it down from the five hundred thousand. Let's dial it up to 50, 50 G's. Say you earned in addition to what you already make because you are a nigger bunny and you're burning the midnight oil and you start a business while you have a job and you make an extra fifty G's net. You can start working on that freedom plan. Okay, me and the wife we got cars. Uh, we're gonna take this fifty G's. They're gone. Pay it off. Oh, well, you know, we owe 150000 on the mortgage. Uh, we're going to take a big principal payment of 50 Gs. All of a sudden, now if you got a simple interest loan, you'll notice this if you pay online. You make a big principal payment, they may start sending you statements where they don't want you to pay them because they're, going to, they're missing that interest. They're like, whoa, this motherfucker got smart. He didn't realize that most of the interest is at the beginning of the loan, not at the end. So if you make any extra payments on your car, your house, do it as close as possible to the beginning. That first, if you can make large payments on anything, car loan, house, first two to five years, you will save yourself so much money on the back end. It's ridiculous. Uh, my car loan, I don't have to make a car payment on, nah, on mine. I could probably go six months because I've always paid more than the minimum payment, always. And that's when I'm like, I'm like, I've not paid a lick of interest this year on that on this car loan. Not a lick. I'm paying cash over time. That's one of the things if you understand how money works, which is another reason that you need to start a business in 2014 and quit your fucking job or start working on it. You will learn how money works. You will have to learn or you won't make it. You will not freaking make it. You will not be able to Stay in business if you do not learn how money works. When you learn how money works, you put your life on hyperdrive. You start to see things that other people can't see. You start to experience things other people can't experience. You will become a more powerful person. 
there is the education that you get in school primary school secondary school college all this stuff it may help you it may not I think every kid should get a financial education so someone says sit down someone should sit them down and say this look what you do with your money is going to predicate the comfort level or the misery level of your life for the rest of your life tell that kid when they're 10 how you handle your money is going to be a big part of your happiness or sadness in life money does not equate to happiness but it sure solves a lot of fucking problems sit that kid down and say look this is how money works this is how the United States of America works this country is set up and predicated on ownership owning stuff and controlling stuff if you have no ownership you have no control you have no power tell a kid straight this is what you need to do you need to learn how to live on less money than you make you need to learn how to save money you need to learn that cash is not a bad thing you need to learn that, hey, you know how to get a really great credit score? Don't use it. <laughs> or only use 10 to 20% of your available credit lines. Just sit them down and tell them that stuff when they're 10. And then tell it to them again when they're 11, 12, 13, 14. Help them start a business. One of the things that cracks me up is I see many kids start businesses. And because it's socially acceptable, it's like, well, we're going to send them to college so they can become more successful. The education they get in college is not going to be one that's going to help them make money. It's not. <laughs> it's not. The education they get in college will be something that would probably help them go work for someone else to help that person make more money. That is how the game is rigged. That is how the game is set. Which is another reason that you need to quit your fucking job in 2014 and at least start working on the business. You will learn how the game is truly played. If you remember that movie with Rodney Dangerfield years ago when he was in class and he was telling the professor how business really worked, he wasn't kidding. He wasn't kidding. You will learn, like everyone was mad at Mitt Romney because he was making all of that money, he wasn't paying any taxes. Oh, boom, Mitt. Me, I was like, I lifted up Mitt's dress and looked at the ankles and said, uh-huh, I see that trust. Uh-huh, I see that tax shelter. Uh-huh, I see that you got this shit incorporated in Bermuda. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That is reality. And guess what? Instead of hating Mitt and being pissed at Mitt, realize that those same available ta those same tax shelters, tax shelters are available to you if you have a business. The hundred thousand dollar income that's derived from a business is treated totally different than a hundred thousand dollar income derived from earned income versus business income. Business income, you can take trips and do legitimate business, be up in Hawaii for a week and actually visit a customer and write that shit off legally, no tax dodge, and actually enjoy the money that you earned, pay less taxes, and still be within the letter of the law? And you don't want to take advantage of that because you're scared? Wow. Ooh, I'm scared. You know, I may get audited. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, you get audited and you've got backup, you're going to walk out of there they're gonna be like damn we didn't get that one stop being fucking afraid of this shit because if you don't learn how money works and i said this before manage your money or your money's going to manage you that is the reality manage your money or your money's going to manage you when you learn how money works when you learn how business works learn how this stuff really works you will free yourself from the matrix you'll create your own sub matrix your own bubble of influence your own sphere of influence and you will have a different life than most of the people that you know which is another reason that you need to quit your job in 2014 and at least start working on your own business you're going to get used to the hate. You're going to get used to the jealousy. You're going to be able to weather it and deal with it much better. Because the longer you go through this, the more that you see it coming and you realize it, what it is. It's not that you're doing a bad job. It's not that you're a bad person. It's not that you're doing anything shady. You just took a risk that many people wish they had taken and you derived benefits from taking that risk. 
It's simple and pure jealousy. Uh, last year this time, I had a whole bunch of people on my ass, hot and heavy, about me charging for information. Several of those people who were against it, who had poo, you know, just had junk to say, guess what they're doing right now? They are trying to charge for information, which is another reason that you should start your business in 2014 and quit your fucking job is the longer you are in the game, because I say they're trying to charge for information because there's a learning curve. There is a steep learning curve on being an internet marketer. Everyone's like, oh, you can make money in the 60s. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. The longer you do this, the greater your skill level becomes. You earn that ability. So uh, I think some of them will probably make the money they want if they stick with it. But if they abandon it, they will not. Because here's a secret for you. If you are selling a book online, what are you going to do when that book reaches a saturation point? And it will reach it very quickly depending upon the size of your audience. What are you going to do? Because once you sell everybody that book in your, your audience, your sales will drop dramatically. So what are you going to do? That's a business lesson. Another reason that you should quit your job in 2014 and start a business or start working on it is you will start earning your education. I don't care if you have a part-time business that takes you five years to turn it into full-time. Those five years of that part-time education are going to be pivotal to your success. Pivotal. What you'll learn, what you'll build, you'll start to go through this stuff. You'll start to like, ah, that makes sense. You'll start to see why other businesses do the things they do. If stuff that used to piss you off will become patently fascinating to you. You was like, oh, okay, everyone knows Coke. Why does Coke market all of the time? Because if Coke was to take six months off from marketing, their sales would plummet. Coke, everyone knows Coke, but Coke has to continue to remind you by having their trucks, by having product placement. They have to continue to remind us that they exist because we will forget them for the next great thing. Even Coke, Apple, all of these companies. Uh, what is IBM doing? When's the last time you see the commercial from IBM? They're still around. <laughs> they're not what they used to be, but they're still around. MySpace, when's the last time you saw an uh, advertisement from MySpace? They're still around. Not what they used to be. You must market consistently to maintain your market share. There's no way around it. Everyone loves word of mouth. It's great. It's awesome. But if that was the case, why are all these multi-billion dollar corporations spending hundreds of millions to billions marketing? Because word of mouth is not all you need when you get to a certain level. Word of mouth is great to get you going. It's wonderful. But the thing is, everyone's not going to get word of mouth. Your product may not be a word of mouth type deal. Where everyone's like, oh, you know, this is great. You know, people love that stuff, but everything's not going to get word of mouth. When you log into Google, what do you see every day? You see Google. You see nothing else. Clear white space in Google. And then when there's an event on holiday, they'll do something really cool. That's marketing. Everything is marketing. Your name, how you dress. All that's marketing. And you have to do it if you want to be successful. Which is another reason that you need to quit your job in 2014 and start working on your own fucking business. You'll learn how to market. You'll learn very quickly that that word of mouth thing and all this other stuff. You're like, okay, I've got this website. I spent all this money. I spent a ton of money on this website. I've got this. I got this. But, um, hmm, no one is coming to my website. Hmm, what is going on with that? What the hell? Marketing. Many people say, hey, Glenn, why don't you spend more money on your website? You know, make a clean website. I have done the study. I sit around and do shit like this. I'll pick random websites, then I'll go to Alexa and other sites, and I'll just look at their traffic. I have seen bullshit websites that did great marketing that had more traffic than beautifully designed, seamless, awesome websites. That's one of the reasons uh, I have one website, Hustlers Food, and I'm going to do another one because websites are pretty much just a place that you direct people to go get what you want them to get. This is why uh, I've moved away from blogging 
the way that I was blogging because it just didn't work for me. It may have great results for someone else, but once again, that's another reason you need to quit your job in 2014 and start working on the business. You're gonna learn what works for you. I have come up with something that works really great for me. Uh, people in my writing group fight me on this, but I can sell books apart and aside from Amazon. Doesn't seem like a big deal to many people. Many people still think that I'm a fool. But what I have learned is I can sell less books and make more money. And I've also come up with a way how I can pimp Amazon for my own personal gain. Just came to me a few weeks ago and I was like, ah, this is how I can make that work and still win. Because another reason you need to start a business, you'll understand how things work. You'll understand when you do metrics. You, you know, all that boring stuff that you don't want to do, that's where you make your money. The anal, you know, analyzing things, uh, paying attention to metrics, uh, that stuff that's non-sexy, that's where the money comes from. That's where the money comes from. So I figured out a way where I could pimp Amazon and you'll hear about it as soon as I get it set up and it's gonna benefit you and you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it! Because you're gonna get some shit for free and we all know that people like free shit. Which is another reason that you should start your business in 2014 and fucking quit your job and I'm switching it up. You're going to build something. There is no greater joy than watching something that was up here come out into the world and become something. It becomes uh, tangible, it becomes real. It becomes this thing that didn't exist, but now it does. That is an awesome feeling. It is an awesome feeling. Totally, totally awesome. So if you're still undecided on whether you should quit your job or get the fuck on, I'm gonna give you some very scary opinions. Do the technology. Anyone that shuffles paper is going to be fucked. Look what QuickBooks did to bookkeepers. Look what photojournalism did to photographers. Look what you are caught up in a world that if if someone can pick up a camera or if someone can develop a program to do what you do, you are there's a target on your back. And it's just a matter of time before the technology hunter pins your ass down and there's a photo of your, you, well, technology's holding your ankles like that and you are, got your eyes X'd out because you're fucking dead. It's just a matter of time. It's a matter of time. However, if you build something, build your own tribe, build your own business, you provide yourself a greater buffer from that happening. I'm not going to lie to you. You can build a business and someone can create a technological advancement that will render your business obsolete. However, going back to what I said earlier, if you got a chunk of money, you can sit down and think about your next move. Whereas if you're just getting uh, unemployment, I only got unemployment in my life maybe three times. Maybe three. If you're getting unemployment and you have all of these bills... Who has the most options? That guy with $180,000 in the bank, house paid for, car paid for, wife still sucking his dick because she respects him as a man? Or you, wife's pissed at you because she's still working and you're at home pondering the meaning of life? The mortgage is due, the car payments are due, baby Joe needs formula and you don't have nothing in your wallet but a $5 bill and your credit cards are maxed out, who has the most options in this scenario? And the person that I described uh, with baby, baby Joe needing the formula, that's most people when they get laid off. That is most people. That was me when I got laid off. I didn't have any money saved. I had some, a hustle going on. I was working on stuff. I had another, you know, I had an ideal, but I didn't have that. I mean, what do you, you know, it's just, you can wait. And, you know, like, hey, you know, that guy Glendon on the YouTube, he says all of this stuff, blah, blah, blah. I want to ask you something. How many times have I been wrong? Dead ass wrong. How many times have I been dead, dead ass wrong? What I said about eBay when I first came here on YouTube 2009, this shit's been realized. I'm going to tell you this right here today. What eBay's doing to people, Amazon's going to do the same. 
They're not doing it now, but at some point it's coming. Why? To do more with less. Everyone, you, you, if you're selling on eBay and you're selling on Amazon, or you, you know, you are disposable. You are a replaceable cog in the machinery. You say you get kicked off eBay, or let's call it your cog melts down or fractures or breaks down. Okay, they're just gonna go to the shelf and put in a new cog right there and the machine's gonna keep going. I would say Etsy's different because you're making your own shit. I have a video up here called uh, Producer versus Consumer. I really suggest that you look at it because when you become a producer, which is another reason that you need to quit your job in 2014 and start a business, when you become a producer, your life will change. When you start thinking about how can I serve the world? How many products can I make? What can I do to make this world a better place? Your whole orientation, your whole thought process, all that stuff changes. You become a different person. But, hey, don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. Just continue to go out there and keep your head in the sand. And then a year from now or two years from now or three years from now when you get that call, uh, Joe, could you just meet us in the waiting room? Or you, could you come to the conference room and you go in there and there's this person you've never seen before and they just start talking to you in very clinical songs. It's like, hey, you know, it's nothing you did and uh, the company's going in a different direction and you're going to get X amount severance package and if you want Cobra, that's going to be like $890,000 per month. Uh, this is what we have to offer and oh, please, clean off your desk and leave the building immediately. And that's if you have a certain kind of job. Because if you're working on the factory floor, if you're working in some kind of service sector, they're just going to call you and say, hey, don't come in. Or they're going to do what I think is the absolute worst. They're going to fire your ass at the end of the day after you did one bit, want some more work for them. And then you're going to realize, you watch this video, and you're going to come back. Because that's something else. Uh, I have a lot of people who've been watching me for three years, and they're like, damn, you were right. Damn, you were right. Damn, you were right. How do I sign up for this course? Uh, what book did you have is going to help me for my situation? Hey, I just got laid off. What can I do to earn five to six thousand dollars and every month within ninety days? Because that's when my severance package runs out, and you know between that, then unemployment comes in. But that's not enough. You don't know how many fucking emails I get like that every fucking day. And those numbers of emails. That's one of the reasons that I uh, deleted a lot of the older emails and. I was just getting that same email over and over and over. Essentially, it should have been the subject should have been like, "Oh, gee, I'm fucked. How can you help me?" So, it may not happen this year, it may not happen next year, but rest assured, if you are in a job that's shuffling papers or something that technology is working on replacing, you're in trouble. And the only way that you can protect yourself and protect your family is to quit your fucking job mentally and start working on a business today. Today. Start working on that business. Start getting that going and building something for your family because like I said, when I got sick and I had to do a major pivot in my life because I always thought I was going to be a storage auction guy because it was so fun. I mean, it was just like every Monday was like fucking Christmas. And I was like, you know what? I may not be able healthy enough to do this shit the way that I was doing it. And then when my partner died, it was just like a lot of the uh, love for the business just went with her because it just felt strange. I know it's, for some people it's like, hey, get that money. But it just felt strange going forward without her. It just really did. And I just made that decision I wasn't, which means I had to start from something. What I'm telling you to do is to start something brand new. What I'm doing started in 2009, July 17th, 3.30 p.m. That's when this shit started. My uh, fifth year anniversary, because you know the statistic, you know, most businesses don't make it five years. I'm about to kick that shit in the ass. And it started off very rough. Wasn't making any money those first few months. Wasn't really. So I'm not giving you something I don't know about. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. I'm just telling you it's going to be worth it. I'm just telling you it's going to be hard. But 
What's harder, working on your business right now when you have the ability to do so and not be stressed the fuck out because you need to make that money to pay the bills or you get laid off and then you get to this position where you have to do this, but you've got that mortgage, you've got that car payment, you've got daycare, you've got all that stuff going on. Which is easier, doing it then or doing it now? To you, I'll let you answer that question in your own mind. And with that, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.